In this video, we're going to look at using the inverse of sine to find a missing angle. So, so far you've been using sine to solve for missing sides of a triangle. And just to refresh your memory on a relationship with sine, if I wanted to go over here and I wanted to talk about sine theta, for instance, um, I would tell you, as before, that it's going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So what I mean by that is, for instance, in this triangle, we have three angles. I like to call this one on the bottom right, angle A. And opposite of A, we have a relationship with side A. So we could say sine A over side A is equal to, and then we'll write our next proportion. And basically, we'd go over here and say, OK, well, we also have angle B that has a relationship with the opposite side of B when it has to do with sine. And there's going to be B right there. So this would be sine B, I'm going to put the big B, right, this angle right here, over this little b, which is the side of the triangle, is equal to sine C over the side of the triangle that's opposite C which is the hypotenuse. So we've been using this rule, and we're going to use it again. Although now we're not going to be trying to find a side of a triangle, in other words, a length of one of the legs or a length of the hypotenuse. Now what we're going to be trying to find is the angle inside. So we're going to have a missing angle. So notice over here, we've been given a value from one leg of the triangle, it's 47. And we're given this value, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is 53. And I know it's the hypotenuse because it's directly across from my right angle sign. So I'm going to go ahead and use sine inverse. And we notate that as put in a negative 1. So we're going to use our law of sines in order to solve this. And so notice right here, right, we have this x and our opposite side is going to be a is equal to 47. We have sine c and its opposite side is 53 is equal to c. And so let's go ahead and set up our proportion. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the side that I'm looking for. I'm going to call that sine A. So I'm going to go ahead and write sine A. Because I like to call, call the angle in the bottom right sine A. That's going to be my A. Over the side length of A, which is 47. And that's going to be equal to sine C, which is 90. So sine 90 over this side, opposing it, right, opposite it, which is 53. And now if I want to go ahead and I want to solve this problem, I'm just going to be using inverse operations. So remember, we're just simply going to cross multiply this. So I end up with 47 times sine 90 is equal to 53 times sine a. Now remember we're trying to solve for sine a where that's what we're trying to get. So what we need to do, unlike some of the other problems we did, I need to go ahead and instead of dividing out sine because we don't know what sine a is, I'm going to divide out the 53. Now if I divide it on the right side, I got to divide it on the left. So those cancel. And all I'm left with is sine A. I'm just going to write that over here on the left. Sine A is equal to, and this is where something different happens. This is where we're going to make a change here. So I got this sine A equals, right? But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in inverse sine. Now, I do want you to know if you look at this right here, it says sine 90. And we've been working with that. And normally, I'll write that in so you can see it. But you don't have to type that into the calculator on this one. I just want you to know if it's sine 90, I'm going to put in my calculator. And a lot of you have already discussed this. Sine 90 is just equal to 1. So we really don't even have to write sine 90. I'm just going to draw a line through it. It's just 1. And 47 times 1 is just going to be 47. It doesn't change anything. 
But the important thing is we now have this ratio here, 47 over 53. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and write that ratio as my answer, 47 over 53. Now, when I put this into the calculator, when I put this ratio in the calculator, it's going to give me an angle. And that angle is going to be the value of this angle right here, angle A, represented by the variable X. So I'm going to go ahead and write inverse sine A equals, I'm going to get my calculator, and I'm going to type it in. So to do that, right, to type that in, we first want to hit second. And then we want to hit the word sign. Notice it gives me inverse sign. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in this ratio, 47 divided by 53. And I'm going to hit enter. And it tells me it's 62.472. So I'm going to write three decimal places for now. So 62.472. And now what we want to do is we want to round it. And I notice um, a lot of your activities, they're having you round to the tenths as well. So this one, we're going to practice rounding to the tenths. So I'm going to underline the tenths place. I'm going to circle the hundreds place. And notice that is a seven, right? And remember, five or more, raise the score. So if it's five or more, we've got to raise the value up. If it's four or less, we leave it the same. So I'm just going to put it down. We leave it alone. Now that is a seven. So when I write my final answer, I'm going to say x which is the missing angle, is equal to 62.5. I'm going to box it, and that is my final answer. So now that you've seen the way that I worked it out, where I had the law of sines, let me show you what it would look like if you do it in a little bit simpler fashion. So again, I told you that we know that sine theta, finding the angle for sine, is just the opposite over the hypotenuse. So to save yourself some work, if you would like to, when you're finding this side, you can simply just write sine, and I'm going to say this is x right here, right? That's my sine a. I'm going to go ahead and say sine x is equal to the opposite value. In other words, the op opposite the angle, right? This side of the triangle, 47 over the hypotenuse. And this is the hypotenuse of the triangle, 53. Right, And if you notice, if I go back over here, that's what we ended up with. Now, we did all this work, and I showed you what was going on. But the fact is, all we did was put the value of the side of the triangle that was opposite of this angle, A, in the numerator. And then we put the hypotenuse, which is 53. That's that longest side of the triangle in our denominator. So if you can remember to put the opposite over the hypotenuse, and then take sine inverse of it, you will end up with your answer, 62.5 after rounding. So really, for these, all you really need to remember is this, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. And then use your inverse sine function in your calculator.